Well, welcome back. We are about to start the rigging process for our model. Now, I have done rigging tutorials in the past. They primarily deal with bones and drivers. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a little bit of overlap, but mostly it's going to be with actions and constraints, which is a different way to do the rigging. And if you're not familiar with one or the other, it might be good to watch you know, all of the different videos I've done on rigging, and that way you'll have a variety of tools in your toolbox to use when you want to go rig. Now, I have done some organization on the project, mostly to make it easier to hide and show things during the demonstration process. It just makes this collection a little easier to read. Uh, most of these things are self-explanatory. Before I go any further, I want to make sure that everything, all my scales and rotations are applied, because these will affect the, the rigging and the animations. So select everything, control A, and apply rotation and scale. And with my cursor in the center, I'm going to create an empty, and it'll be a box or cube, and I'm going to scale it to be basically a bounding box for the model. And this is going to be a handle that we can use to ma manipulate the model in our scenes. So select everything and make sure your, your bounding box, your empty, is the, the active element, control P and object. And now if we move, ah, you can see I made a mistake. Um, I meant to mention it. Make sure you include your shrinks in the parenting as well, because you can see what happens, let me turn that back on. You can see what happens if you don't include your shrinks is they stay still when you move the model and just everything stretches like that. So quick fix on that, I'm going to move my empty of the scene collection so I can see it. Turn it back on. And these are all my shrinks. All my shrinks are now in there. And I'm just going to select everything again. Make sure that's the active control P object. All right. Now if I turn everything off, turn the airplane back on, it should move all together as a unit. And the nice thing about this parent also is if I, you know, you have it in a scene and you rotate it and you want to move it back to the center, Alt-G will snap it back to the center and Alt-R will realign it to its original rotation. All right, so now we have our, our handle. Let me call this um, ME109 empty so we know what it is. And that'll be our primary way of, of moving the whole model. But now we want to go in, we want to parent some of these sub assemblies together, um, mostly for rigging purposes. So for example, back here on the rudder there are these hinges that want to be part of the rudder and not necessarily part of the model because we want them to move with the rudder and there's the tail aid the trim tab also and then if i select the rudder as the final item i can control p object and now those items are all connected to the rudder but the rudder is still parented to the box so i can still move everything similarly we want to do something with the propeller so i want to select this 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 and i want to select the propeller last and control p i'm going to parent everything to the prop so that the entire spinner is part of it. But I also need to parent the spinner shrink to the spinner as well. So there's the spinner shrink, and I'm gonna parent that as well. And now if we move the prop, it all moves together. And then when we rotate it, it all rotates together. So we'll animate that later. All right, so let me hide most of the airplane. All right, so it's pretty much left with things that I think we're going to rig now. Now, as far as other parenting goes, I want to parent the wheels and the uh, panels, everything to the main strut. And then actually I want to parent it to, the, to this axle here so that everything moves as a unit. So I'm going to do all these things and control P to that. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to select all these things, control P to that. That way when I rotate this, the whole landing gear moves by itself. Oops, I missed some. Try it again. All right, so that all works together. Down here on the flaps, we got this little edge piece. I want that to be separated because we have left and right. I want them to rotate differently. So I hit P, separate that. Sorry. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna separate these because they're mirrored. They have, to, they have to operate independently, so we got to make sure they are different objects. So that's a different object, that's a different object, that's a different object, that's not. Separate that. I'm just going to do the other flaps here. All right, well, all the objects are now separated. Um, the elevators don't need to be separated because they're, they operate as a unit, and the various flaps are now different, separated differently. In fact, I could probably join the upper and lower flaps to their hinges. Let me do that. All right, so now the flaps are joined with their hinges. That'll be helpful later when we actually uh, go and um, 
break the flaps. All right, so let's start the front of the plane and just kind of work our way back. We already have prop all parented together. So next thing we need to do is just define how fast it rotates. Uh, if you use the standard 24 frames per second um, and the standard uh, motion blur settings, I found that a uh, rotation rate of about 800 uh, per 24 frames makes a decent motion blur. So we've got a motion blur, something like this, at 800 per 24 frames. So let's do that. So I'll go into here and I will hit I to create a keyframe here. And I've got my end set at 24, so I'm going to go all the way to the end and I'm going to rotate along the Y axis. And I think I wanted to rotate clockwise or positive angle, so 800. And I hit I again. And we want to make sure that the animation starts right away, so we need to go to here, click on here, right click, extrapolation mode, and click linear. Uh, if you don't do that, otherwise it'll start off slowly and then build up speed. This way, when we play the animation, it just kicks right off and starts running right away, which is what we want. All right, so we can hide this. Maybe I'll just move this to its own collection now. Move it to a new collection, we'll call it prop. And we'll just hide that, because we're done with it. Um, this is the air filter scoop, or clamshells that are on the front of the uh, air filter that's sometimes put on the plane. So we want this to open up from the top, right? So what we can do is we can set the uh, origin to the center of the hinge here. I'm just going to select these guys, cursor there, and then say set origin, set origin to 3D cursor. Right, and now if I go to the top view and hit R, you can see that then we do, this, do the same thing with this one, set origin to 3D cursor. And now that one opens that way as well. And maybe we'll bring back the center portion of the air filter so, so we can see how far to, to move it. All right, so this is gonna be the first example of an action in order to animate these, these clamshells. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little controller first. So I'm gonna put my mouse here, I'm gonna say mesh, circle, and I want seven sides, scroll it down go into vertex mode, GZ, SZ0, also SX. All right, so now I just have a little arrow. I'm going to scale that. I'm going to create duplicate. All right, so we're just going to use this as a, as a, as a tool or widget in order to actuate the controls here. So I'm going to actually make a duplicate of this because we're probably going to use that for other things as well. It's a useful, useful tool. And if you wanted to, you could even go in here, um, say add text. And in the text, we go to tab mode. We can type uh, filter. And then scale it down. That way it's you know kind of self-labeled there. And then I can just join the two together. I need to convert to text first. Convert to text, or mesh rather, and then I can join them. All right, so now this is a unit. I'm going to set the origin to geometry. And just make sure that its rotation and scale is set properly. So we're going to go to the side view, R90, GZ. And I want to put this kind of like right in the middle here. So I'm going to hide this for a moment. Put the cursor there. Selection cursor, and then GZ. And now it'll be on top. It'll just sit on top there. So now we need to create actions to open these clamshells. So up here I have a dope sheet open, just from dope sheet, dope sheet. And then once you're in the dope sheet, you can then change it to action editor. And we're gonna animate a new action for this clamshell. So at frame one, I want it to be rotations, blah. I'm gonna do both of them here, All right? And then at frame, say 24, we go to frame 24. I want it to be fully open. It doesn't really matter how many frames you hear because the actual motion is going to be controlled by this tool and how fast it moves. So we're going to say R, and I just want it to open until it just just touches or just doesn't touch the filter. All right, so that's how far that's going to open. And I'm going to hit I, and that'll be that one. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rotate it back until it is just about touching. I'm going to hit I to lock that one. I'm just going to move this one left or to the right, just to look more centered that way. All right, I'm going to push it down just so it's a little closer. All right, so now we've got this animation up here. And if we were to go back to the beginning and play it, 
they would open and close. But the nice thing about actions is we can now save this, this action and not have to animate it all the time. So let me show you what I mean. So here I'm going to call this filter door um, dot what, L, I guess. Call that one filter door dot L. And this one I'm going to call filter door dot R. So the right filter door. So we've named our two animation actions. And I want to create a fake user for each of these. And then I want to delete them from here, right? The fake user is going to keep it from being deleted entirely from the project, but I don't want it directly associated with this piece of geometry anymore. Because now we're going to use constraints to animate this. So I'm going to add an action constraint. And the target will be our tool here. Right? And I'm going to make sure that rotation and scale are applied because they weren't. Because that's going to be important when we move it around. So here's the clamshell again. Let's call this, um, give this thing a name. So hit F2. I'm going to call it filter widget. All right. So here we see our filter widget. We want it to, we want the Y direction of the filter to open and close the tool. So we're going to go to Y location. We want it to be local. And if you have it on local, that means that if we move the airplane around, it's not going to affect this. Uh, if it was on world, that means if we if we move the airplane forward or backwards, we would actually adjust this, this widget too. So local space is what we want. And then we need to set the range that we want to move this. So right now, let's make it something like negative three, something easy to remember on the Y axis and 0.25 on the Z, just nice round numbers and maybe 0.5. Yeah, I like it better where it was. All right, so this is where we are here. So here we want a min range of, so we want to pull it back. If we pull it back, you can see the numbers are getting smaller, right? We're starting on the negative, numbers getting bigger. We're starting at negative three and we're going back towards negative two, All right, GY. Right, so from negative three to negative uh, maybe two seven. All right, so go in here and we want the minimum is negative three. Negative two point seven is the max value. The action we're going to choose that uh, filter door left as the action, and frame start is one and frame end is twenty four. And hopefully, if I move this, that now opens that clamshell. Now, if you go to Edit, Preferences, and search for Copy, you can do this Copy Attributes menu, which is helpful. So I'm going to say, click on that, and it's going to apply it. And now if I say, click this guy, and then this guy, and hit Control-C, I get this new Copy Attributes window that's activated by that add-on. And here I can uh, apply or copy the, which I want to do with the other, I want to move from here. To here. I want to move, I want to copy the constraints from the one we just did onto this one we haven't done. So control C and we're looking for copy constraints, copy object constraints. And now you can see this one now has an action constraint on it. And all you have to do is change the action. We want the door R to be the action. The other number should stay the same. So if I move this along the Y axis, now the clam doors open and close. Pretty cool. All right, next thing we want to do though is this, we can move this thing any way we want. We'd like to lock this into some kind of position. So we can add a constraint to this as well. So I'm going to add a location constraint, limit location. And here I'm going to just check everything. Before I do that, I'm going to check its values because we want, I'm just going to copy this for the X because it's a weird number, 0.6, negative three, and 0.25. So we're going to put all these in. The minimum value for X, let's going to put these in. We said we. Point three, negative point, negative three. I'm going to figure these out in a second. And what was the other one? Point two five. All right, so it's kind of locked into position now. So what we want is we want to say, okay, along the y-axis, it can move from negative three to maximum of negative, negative two. And we want this also in a local space. So what we're doing is we're telling Blender that this is no longer allowed to move in any direction. So right now I'm hitting G. I'm trying to move it left and right and up and down. It won't do it. It'll only move it in this direction. Maybe negative two is, is too far. Maybe negative 2.7, maybe? Negative 2.7 would be the maximum. And then we'll make sure that our maximums make there, 2.7, 2.7. All right, so you can see that I'm right now I'm trying to push it further back along the y-axis, and it won't let me do it. So now we've got a widget that'll nicely open up that air filter cover. That's pretty cool. All right, we're going to do something similar with the landing gear. All right, and the one thing to think about when we're doing the animations for these is that I think the landing gear on the 109 doesn't retract equally on both sides. So 
So here's a still from an image or from a video. You can see that the left gear is, this is on takeoff, the left gear is coming up way faster than the gear on the right. Um, this one a little bit less extreme, but the left gear definitely retracts faster than the right gear. So for fun, let's, let's animate that as well. So let's go to the front view and this is all parented together. So we're going to actually animate off of this. And if we look at our image planes, we can use these to line up our, uh, our wheels, both in the front and side views. There you go, there's the side view. Because it does come forward a little bit and you know, there's that angle look from the front. So let's take a look at this guy and I'd make sure we're at one in the timeline. And I'm going to hit I for rotation. And I know that at the 20, we're going to make another action here. So at, at the end of the animation sequence, we'll say 24. I think I want it down about uh, negative 80 degrees from the front and 30 degrees from the side. And this doesn't quite line up with our drawing, but you know, it's just kind of the way it is. So at the end of the animation, I want this wheel here. So I'm going to hit I. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other. Actually, let me call this um, gear um, dot R. That'll be our action name for that. And let's go to the beginning again and hit this one and we'll set I for rotation. And at 24, we will R80 from the front and R30 from the side. And now those should be exactly the right position, equal distance at the end of the uh, animation. But we know that the left landing gear, you know, this one, moves up more moves more slowly than the right one does so if i come back to oh, you know let me name this one too this one was named already right that was this was gear dot r so i'll make this gear dot l and we want it to kind of hang out here at zero 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 for a little bit so maybe there i'm gonna set these all to zero and then hit i and now if we play the animation, it should drop at different rates. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. We can make a fake user for the gear.r, delete it. Make a fake user for the gear.l, and delete it. Right. And now we're going to duplicate this guy, our arrows. I don't need my image planes anymore. I'm going to move it here. I'm actually going to move it to the center. And origin to geometry. Sort of to geometry, and I'm going to add text. I'm going to edit mode. I'm going to type gear. Get out of edit mode. Scale that down. And just kind of put it right here in the middle. Convert it to an object. Convert to mesh. And control J. All right, so now we have our, our gear widget. I'll call it gear widget. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create action constraints for the landing gear. So I want to create an action. And let's put this someplace reasonable. And this, okay, so on the Z, let's make it negative one, so it's easy to remember. And Y, we'll make it a negative three. All right, so it's, it's out of the way of the airplane. Um, that's mostly what I'm dealing with there. All right, so we have an action. The target is the gear widget. We want it on the Z location, local, space. Range, we want it to go down. So right now it's currently at negative three. So we'll go negative three to negative four. So negative th four is the min, negative three is the max. The action will be gear.l. And we want from frame one to frame 24. And if we move this up and down, now what's happening is it's, it's starting off down. So what we can do is we can actually invert the timeline here. And now when we move it, down. Yeah, but maybe I'll make that bottom transition a lot less. A full meter is too much, so negative, negative 3.2, say. No, it's at, um, no, it's Z is negative 1, sorry, that's my fault. So negative 1 to negative 1.5, say. That should, that should be better response. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. All right, so now we're going to copy the constraints over. So control C, copy object constraints. And now we just change this one to the gear.r. 
action. Now you can see that they rotate down into position and that they rotate at different rates, so that's cool. Now we just need to create a constraint, a location constraint for this guy. So limit location, and we want it at 0, 3, 0, negative 3, negative 1. So 0, negative 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 1. All right, so what we really want is, what do we say? It could go down to negative 1.5, I think. Yeah, negative 1.5 is the min of the z. Negative 1.5. And we want local space. So now I can't move this thing anything but up and down, and I can only move it that far. Like I'm trying to pull it down further, I'm trying to push it up further, it doesn't work. I'm trying to pull it left and right, it doesn't work. So now I can just grab that widget. And what we can do later on when we want to animate is we actually then would animate keyframes on this and not on landing gear. Right? So for example, if we wanted to animate the landing gear going down, I could do a keyframe on its location here, hitting I, and then at frame 24. Go to, sorry, move it down and hit I again. And now, if we play the animation, the yeah, landing gear goes down. All right, so that's all that. So we can just get rid of these. We don't need these. All right, so that is the landing gear. Make sure we save. You know, I think I'm going to clean up a little bit here just to hide some stuff. So all this, I'm going to move into the uh, filter collection and then hide that so it's out of our way and since we're done with the landing gear I can move that into which I don't see one so let's create one and I'm going to hide that and I'm going to stick I must have one I'll clean that up later just stick that in there for now just to get it out of our way so we're not looking at it. I'm going to move this one there as well any one and I landing gear at one um, just so we're kind of, as we move along, we're just going to hide more and more stuff until we've got nothing left to look at. Now I'm going to show you how to do another version of action uh, animations, but using bones. And we're going to use bones to drive all of the flaps. So from top view, I'm going to create an armature. Side view, rotate negative 90 degrees, and maybe scale it down a little bit, and then apply rotation and scale. Now in edit mode, I'm going to duplicate this bone. Now, now I want to take the endpoints of this bone and snap them to the endpoints of each of these uh, hinge lines. So if I go into edit mode here and I move my cursor to there and then go into edit, edit mode on the bones, I can say selection to cursor and go back into the control surface, move my cursor to this end, cursor to selection, edit mode, and then selection to cursor. So I'm just going to do that for all the control surfaces. All right, I now have bones lined up with the hinge lines on all of my pieces. So now I want to name things to keep things organized. I'm going to call this flap armature. And then the individual bones inside. So this is going to be the controller. And this is what's going to be used to drive the flaps. This is going to be outer flap dot left, inner Flap dot left radiator dot left inner flap dot right outer flap dot, dot right and finally inner flap or radiator flap dot right. So now our bones are named, the armature is named. But the next thing we need to do is to bind our flaps to the armature. So I'm going to select everything, or I guess parent. Um, make sure that the armature is the active element, control P, and then with empty groups. And if we look at the vertex groups for each of these flaps, you'll see that it created a vertex group for each bone. So now we need to select each flap, go into edit mode, and then select the appropriate vertex group to assign it to. So this is the outer flap left. So we want to assign 100% to that bone. This is the outer, this is the inner flap left. 100%, and so on. All right, so if we go into pose mode now, and we select a bone, you can see that the axis of rotation along the Y is straight down the hinge line. And if I hit RYY, it's going to rotate that flap along that hinge line. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to animate these bones inside the action editor. 
So let's do one at a time here. So the initial position here, I want to hit, I'm on, I'm on frame one. So I want to set a keyframe. And then at frame 24, I want to rotate this 40 degrees, negative. Right, and I'm going to set another keyframe. So if we go back into object mode and we scroll through our animation, you can see that that, that rotates the flap down. Now we, do the, we want to do the same thing for the other flap. So at position one, I want to be in the bones. I'm going to take this one. And I want to be in pose mode. I want to set the initial positions. And then I want to go to frame 24, which is the end of our animation sequence. This one I'm going to rotate R, Y, Y, negative 35 degrees. And set that. R, Y, Y, 40 degrees, negative. Set that. Set the keyframe. This is going to be 35 degrees. Keyframe. R, Y, Y, 40. Keyframe. And R, Y, Y, 40. Keyframe. Now if we go back into object mode and we scrub through our animation, you can see how the flaps go down. So we can play that. And that's our flap animation. Like before, we want to create a, well, we want to name it, say flaps. And we want to create a fake user and then we want to delete it because we don't want it actually on there because we don't want it to play whenever we play the animation. All right, save your file. We don't want to forget to name our armature. Get that named. And we'll hit F2 and name the object as well. All right, next thing to do is to go into pose mode, select a bone, and make sure you're down here inside the bone constraints property window. And we want to add an action. We're going to choose our armature, our flap armature, and we're going to use the controller as the bone to control it. I want the X rotation local, and the range I'm going to have it rotate along the x-axis, negative 90 degrees, is the min, and we're going to choose the flaps action, and we're going to start at, it's going to be backwards, we're going to do 24 to 1, and now if you rotate this on the x, the flap moves. So I'm going to do the same thing with these other bones. A faster way to do this might be to use the control C option to copy the constraints. Yeah, that was definitely faster. Save your project. Next thing to do is add a rotation constraint to this since we don't want it rotating past 90 degrees and we don't want it pat the one rotating in just any old direction. So under constraints, add a limit rotation. We're going to limit everything and the min is negative 90 degrees on the x-axis. And we're going to do it in local space. So now if we hit R, it's only going to A, rotate 90 degrees, and B, only rotate on the X axis. Right now this bone is going to be inside the fuselage. So if we turn the fuselage on, you're going to, it's going to be hard to see. So if we go into edit mode and just move it up, hit G and Z. It's going to put it up above the fuselage there. And now we go into pose mode. We'll be able to more easily see it when we do the animation. To make things a little neater, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be in pose mode and I'm going to hide the bones I'm not interested in seeing. Just hide those. And then this bone, I'm going to turn on names so we can see what it says there. And then I'm going to go into bone properties and I'm going to rename it flap controller. And with the names turned on, you'll be able to see that. And we have other bone, we're going to have another bone up here for aileron. So I just want to um, differentiate between the two of them. All right, I rigged the ailerons. Um, it was a little different than the um, flaps, so I probably should explain a little bit what I did. I have the bones like I did on the flaps connected to them, but I had to create two actions, one for bank left, one for bank right. So if we look in the, um, in the bones under the constraints, you can see I have two actions. Instead of one, I have a roll left action and a one that's a roll right action. And I did that so that when the joystick was in the neutral position, the flaps would be neutral. And then if I move you know, on the Y on the, you know, from this position here, you can see that they, they deflect up and down. Um, and if we look back at our reference materials, we can see that the, the ailerons 
have a different deflection up and down. It's, it's a different type of, uh, it's a special type of airline when the hinges down here. So they're going to deflect negative 22 and then 11 degrees in the other one. So that's what I just set these two so that when one goes up 11 degrees, the other one goes down 22 degrees. Uh, but I had to do that using actually two um, actions and then the controller just drives them both. And I've got that limited right now so that it only works, you know, like a joystick going left to right. And then the next thing to do would be to allow it to move forward and back to change the rudder, the elevator position. So I'm just going to rig the elevators to work pretty much the same way. I'm going to go to bone here and I'm going to create an action item so that when the stick moves forward and back, um, it works. I created again two actions for the elevators, uh, one for climbing, one for diving, and then I tied those actions into the joysticks forward and back rotation so that when I move the joystick forward and back, the elevators move, and when I move the joystick left to right, the ailerons move, and I can just wiggle the whole thing around and all the control surfaces move. I just want to hide the unnecessary bones so they're not cluttering stuff. Go to edit mode. Hide them here. So now we have flap controller. In pose mode. Drops our flaps. We can animate that. And our joystick. Also in pose mode. Pretty cool. All right, and what we can't forget to do, or don't want to forget to do, is now that these items are parented to the bones, we need to parent these bones back to our uh, central object here, right? Because if we move our control box, our bounding box, the bones don't, the armatures don't move with it. So if we select the, the controller bones, select the uh, bounding box, uh, control P object, and now if we move this, everything moves. And since we did it locally, then our controls shouldn't move when we rotate the object, since all of the controls work on the local space of the aircraft. So let's unhide everything. And let's just check our work here. So we have our gear down button. You know, hit G, we should be able to move our gear down. That's nice. We've got our air filter, hit G. It opens and closes. You can animate that nicely. We have our joystick. If I just wiggle it, go into pose mode. And I can move my ailerons. See how it deflects the ailerons? I probably should put a limit on that. So it should be a limit on rotation, say front and back, and along the x-axis as well. So maybe plus or minus 20. So it doesn't go as far. All right, so we'll get full, full back rudder at 20 degrees, or elevator rather, and then uh, full joystick 45 degrees. Doesn't really matter because you're just going to animate this to full deflection anyway. And then we have our flap controller in pose mode. And then if we were going to animate these, we would just go into pose mode and create, you know, whatever animation we wanted. And there, there go our flaps. Pretty cool. All right, so the only other thing left then is the is the rudder, which is the easiest of all because uh, it runs on a 90 degree angle um, and we've already got it parented to these hinges so if I isolate it for a second if I isolate the hinges as well actually just the hinges and I go into edit mode and I select from the top so now I've selected the top and bottom hinges I'm going to move the cursor to that and if I select the rudder and say set origin to 3D cursor. So now the it'll rotate along the z-axis there, and we can, if we want to, we can set up a constraint on that. So a rotation limit, and I don't know what the rotation limit is, but it'll be on the z-axis. Maybe I don't know. Let's take a look from the top. See what it looks like. Turn this off. maybe 20 degrees, All right. So we'll say 20 degrees, left and right, x, y. So negative 20, positive 20. And then if we hit this and hit R, the only thing it's gonna do is it's gonna swing left and right, and it's gonna max deflect at 20 degrees. All right, so that is the rudder. All right, and there are other things I guess you could animate if you wanted to, you could animate the, the canopy if you wanted to. Um, you could animate dropping the drop tank. Um, but right now though, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. There's our plane speeding along. Maybe do a couple of test renders, see what it looks like with the uh, flaps and stuff down, gear down. And hold on a second, we'll see what that looks like. I did a couple quick renders 
I uh, didn't spend any time fixing lighting or color match or anything. But I just wanted to see what it looked like, kind of, you know, landing and taking off. In the next lesson, I think what we'll do is I'll do some actual scene setup, lighting, and uh, maybe a short animation as well. Uh, hope to see you there.